question is from Corn Van Gruening. You guys always talk about reverse dieting. What exactly is it and what would be the best approach? So reverse dieting uh, became popular. Going in the other direction. Yeah, yeah. when when you have these uh, like bikini competitors and physique competitors and bodybuilding competitors who would go on these 12 or 16 week diet protocols to get super, super shredded for a competition. And then what ended up happening is they would get really shredded. They'd restrict their calories, do lots of cardio, whatever, get really, really shredded. Then they would do their competition. Then the competition was over. And then they'd just go nuts. They would just go nuts and eat a bunch of food and, okay, I'm done with my competition. And some of these people would gain 30, 40, 50 pounds in a very, very short period of time, which is terribly unhealthy for the body and actually results in the creation of new fat cells. actually makes it harder for you to get lean uh, again later on. So then people started to learn about reverse dieting. And reverse dieting basically says this. If you have 12 weeks leading into a competition – you should have maybe six to 10 weeks leading out of it as well. And the reverse diet is literally kind of the opposite of what the diet was. You're slowly upping your calories in a structured way to prevent that crazy rebound and fat gain that people get uh, post-show. Now, the way I look at it is the way I would look at somebody who uses uh, anabolic steroids. Like someone's going to go, I'm going to do an eight-week cycle of anabolic steroids, but they don't have any post-cycle therapy planned. They're setting themselves up for failure. So like a good... You know, you talk to these pro bodybuilders, they'll say a good steroid cycle is dictated by the post-cycle therapy. Well, a good diet, in my opinion, is dictated by the reverse diet. How good can you come out of it, speed up the metabolism, and minimize uh, some of the problems that, that happen with the without reverse dieting? Well, the, <clears throat> I love this conversation because this is actually how I found Lane Norton. Um, and when I was first getting into like the whole bodybuilding world and that community, I was like searching for you know, bodybuilders that were, were presenting really good information around this. I knew this because I know how the body works. I know how the metabolism works, or I understand it to somewhat that, you know, if we restrict calories, restrict calories, restrict calories to get lean, what ends up happening is the, the body adapts to that. And it becomes, this becomes your new caloric maintenance. I think a lot of people don't understand that our metabolism is this free flowing thing. It is not a, a set number. You weren't born with a certain metabolism that burns X amount of calories. It's ever changing. Every time you add a couple pounds of muscle to your body, it changes. Every time you start exercising a certain way, it changes. If you become more sedentary, it changes. You restrict calories uh, dramatically for weeks on weeks on weeks, it changes. It changes. It's adapting. It's adapting and it's getting, it's getting used to whatever that you're doing to it. So if you have somebody who's on a diet who is you know, week over week over week has been increasing cardio and and restricting calories and restricting calories. That person who started that diet, they might have had a caloric maintenance at say, let's say, twenty five hundred calories when they started this whole process. That that's where their body stayed the same. That's what calorie maintenance means. And then over that time, they've restricted calories and maybe even added movement. And by the time of the, they get to their their ultimate goal, they look the way they want to, or they lose their twenty pounds their new calorie maintenance is no longer 2,500. It might be something like 1,400. And so what ends up happening a lot of time is people go, oh, awesome. I look amazing. This is what was my goal. Now, I, I, the diet. And now I'm back to how I was eating before. Mm. And what ends up happening is now they're in a worse position than they were back when they were, they had, they had built their metabol or their metabolism or their calorie maintenance, excuse me, was at 2,500 because now their calorie maintenance is at 1,400. And then they think they can go back to how they were eating that 2,500 to 3,000 calorie diet sometimes. And what ends up happening is it just a ton of weight gets body fat gets put on them because they have a new, a new calorie maintenance. And what you want to do, like Sal is saying, is the same way you restricted every week over week to get down to that place, you want to slowly introduce calories back into the diet and ideally change your stimulus. So this is where I love to switch up the programming for my clients. So if I have a client, we reach our goal, you know, when she first hired me, her calorie maintenance was somewhere between 25, 2600 calories. I've slowly reduced her and and done and and we were following a certain program and she hits her goal. Awesome. Okay, well I'm, my job isn't done now like cuz I don't want her only eating 14, 1500 calories for the rest of her life. So now I'm going to start coming the other way and I'm going to start adding calories to her diet. And when I do that, I'm also going to change the stimulus inside the gym. So switch up her programming. Maybe she's following like MAPS Anabolic. That's what got us down to that, si that size. Now I'm going to go to MAPS Performance or I'm going to go to something like MAPS Strong, something completely different, a new stimulus. 
So what I'm hoping by doing that, while I'm increasing calories back into her diet, I'm hoping any extra calories that her body is getting, that they're getting partitioned over to build muscle and to support this new adaptation, this new focus, this new modality that we're doing. So that that's what reverse dieting is. And a lot of people didn't talk about this. I didn't learn about this until over a decade into personal training, how important this was. And you know, the way we were taught in the, the back in the days was just cut calories, restrict, get them to lose lose weight. And then you're done. And then you're done. Yeah. You know, there was no there was no talk about what do you do to these people with, you know, after they reach their goal. And there still isn't a lot of people talking about this. I mean, Lane was one of the first people that I came across. He's got a great book on this too. I think it's one of the better uh, pieces of content that you can invest in for somebody who is, you know, wanting to diet, get down into great shape. And then what does it look like to come out of it? Because uh, if you care about staying fit for the rest of your life, I, that part of it is as important, uh, if not more important, than the journey there.